Hey, hello, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining Your Max. Today we are going to compare the performance of the Vindicator 21 using the stainless steel housing and copper button contact that I used in my earlier setup of the Vindicator against the copper housing using the copper uh, internals. I have the normal setup, drawing a fixed 30 amps from this electronic load, no matter what the wiring resistance is or differences between mechs, this will always draw 30 amps from a three and a half volt power supply that I have sitting above here. And then what we do is we read the voltage across the post, which will be the voltage drop total of the atomizer, the mech, and the solid aluminum slug that I used to pass the current through the device. Then we subtract the effect of the atomizer and the slug and you're left with just the voltage drop and we can calculate the power loss of the mech itself and you can see the results of that for all the mechs I test in the link in the description below of the voltage drop table uh, for the mechs and let's get started. The um, first set of test results I got last time I test Vindicator voltage drop was about 0.158 volts total for everything here that was about 4.4 watts that's uh, almost exactly the same as the Mike Vapes Dabpo clutch mechanical mod but it's good for a stainless steel mod and I want to make sure when I press the button this goes to zero it does now to prevent any arcing damage from accumulating and possibly affecting the results especially if I want to repeat the testing what I do is I close the contacts and then I fire a two second pulse of current at 30 amps and we can read the voltage drop over here and we go to zero about 0 0.165 0 0.17 0 0.18 and that was some variation I remember last time I tested this 0.13, that's good. 0 0.16, 0 0.165, 0 0.175. Okay, so it's about 0.17, about the same. This is, uh, I burnished the contacts down after last time, so they are slightly different than brand new contacts, but the difference between 0.158 and around 0.17, especially when it can vary from like 0.13 to 0.2 depending on the pressure where you're pressing etc we're essentially where we were before so we'll take a couple quick measurements again and then we'll compare it against the copper one so see if we can get more consistent readings here 0.177 that's very high well, I'm getting very high here let's see okay 0 0.165, 0 0.17. All right, so it's 0 0.165, 0 0.17. Now let's switch to the copper housing. Make sure it goes to zero. Okay, and firing. 0 0.14, 0 0.17, 0 0.24. Make sure there are no high spots or anything. Though I did do this a bunch of times before. 0 0.3. 0.3. Okay, 0 0.13. 0 0.155. 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0.2, just shifting the contacts around, the battery in this again. One hundred point one, point one one two, point one four four, point one one seven, point one four. So it's bouncing around a lot. Let's go back to the stainless steel and just see if we can start getting more consistent or consistent enough in order to be able to say, hey, here's how much better the copper because the copper does seem to be performing better which I would expect Point 
point one four point one four point one six five point one eight point two two it's almost as if it warms up the resistance is going up which happens with metals but it, it's surprising the difference point one eight point one nine point one five all right so this is about the same as it was doing before I'm making sure not to cut, touch any of the surfaces that are actually conducting the current. And firing. Point one one five. Point one two five. Point one three five. Eighty seven. Okay, that I did with a kind of real accelerated to the end hit one one one. Okay, that's much more consistent now. I'm going to call it 0.12. So we went from a 0.158 or essentially a 0.16 down to about a 0.12. You can see though where you press the button, how much you tighten up here, how much you tighten down here, all can have a decent effect on the resistance uh, all the way up to doubling it or bring it down to a slightly lower value than what you might get nominally. So there's no quote correct number unquote but by doing enough presses we can get a good idea of what these are and the copper definitely does perform better. I'll put down at the bottom now what the power loss is versus the 4.4 watts before and this time we won't be doing any arcing testing because it's the same contact setup for both and the point you can see underneath right in here is where contact is made when this comes down. So we use the same set of contacts for both of these so the arcing won't change at all for uh, using the two different ones and the thermal testing there's not a huge fundamental difference in the performance so the copper does definitely perform better but the heating will still be the same the heating in this device comes from the lugs uh, when you press the button oops, the lugs transfer the current will come down into here and then out the lugs to the shell and you can see the heating will be here and over here now it's not a lot of heating It's a couple days after I did the testing, but I wanted to go into a little more detail about the performance difference that we saw between the stainless steel housing and the copper housing being used with a copper button contact and the stainless steel Vindicator 21. And to do that, I've got a couple numbers. Now, I know everyone hates numbers, but it'll go quickly, and it's really important because it's easy to jump to conclusions that maybe aren't deserved here in terms of the performance differences. Now, I took a look, I did the math, and the voltage drop just in the mech. So we're taking away the atomizer and, and my solid aluminum slug. With a stainless steel housing, it was about 0.14 volts. With the copper housing, it was 0 0.102 volts. Now, that's about a 0 0.04 difference, 38 millivolts, 0 0.038 uh, volts, which at 30 amps is about 1.1 watts. Now, improvement using the copper housing versus the stainless steel housing. Now, the copper housing performs better, which we would expect. But is that just because it's a type of the metal? Namely, is that 1.1 watt improvement just because we switched to copper or is something else going on? So I did a little more investigating. I took a look at the resistances of the metals itself and I calculated that and I calculated the voltage drop you would get just through the metal. Bear with me, just through the metal, not counting any of the connections to the you know, outside of the housing or the contact or anything like that. Through the stainless steel, you'd get about a four 
millivolt drop. Through the copper, you get a 0.1 drop. Now you go, holy cow, look at the difference. You know, it's, it's 40 times higher voltage drop in the stainless steel housing. Just the metal itself, just the metal. Let, we're just gonna talk about that now. But even the stainless steel housing, the voltage drop through the metal is four thousandths of a volt, one two hundred and fiftieth of a volt. The copper, yeah, it's 40 times lower, but 40 times almost nothing is still incredibly low. So the power loss through the copper housing, just the metal, is about three thousandths of a watt. It's about an eighth of a watt through the stainless steel housing. So the difference between them is 121 milliwatts, 0.12 watts, about an eighth of a watt. So just from the metal itself, we, there's only about a one eighth of a watt difference between the stainless steel housing and the copper housing. But we measure a 1.1 watt difference between the two, several times higher. So yes, just the housing metals have a one eighth difference, but it's about more than just the metal. Almost 90% of the difference in performance between the two housings comes from the connections, not from the metal itself. The threads and how they connect, the lug and how it touches uh, the lug on the button, how it touches the housing are critical. Now, in the setup that I have here, the stainless steel threads never, I never felt them engage when I was tightening them into the mech. Um, I never felt them start to rub and smear against each other before the contact, excuse me, before the housing just bottomed out, namely with, you know, tightened up uh, against the mech. But for the copper housing, I felt the threads engage and rubbing against each other before this fully tightened up, uh, up against the uh, bottom of the mech. I think that's why we get so much more of an improvement than just what the metals would say, namely that the threads for this housing smear and rub against each other, breaking the oxide layers. So it's more than just this being copper. We just can't blindly say that uh, copper is always better. Now, it, copper probably is, but if you have good stainless steel threads, they can easily outperform crappy copper threading or uh, copper contacts or how the lugs engage something or how the uh, contact makes uh, touches the battery or anything like that. When you've got this much metal, there's so little voltage drop, we have to pay attention to the other things that are going on. So if, if there's something you love about the copper and you just want copper, you just want silver, that's fine. But if you rather have a stainless steel mech and you don't want to get it because you're afraid of the power loss, do a little more digging because you might be surprised at the performance. It might be closer than you think. That is the test of the Vindicator. The copper housing does perform better. And those who are looking to maximize performance on the Vindicator, I recommend getting the copper housing and you can use it with the copper button and contact that you already have from the earlier setup. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.